Nate Rossin here with my coworker, Chuck Birch. And today we're going to discuss the products that we use to maintain your SSQ unique control roof panel machine. And all the products we have are listed in our SSQ2 manual. Page six right here in the manual, you'll get a list of all the products we're using here. Well, most of these products are available at uh, homedepot.com. Fastenal carries uh, some of these products here, but you can actually get them from NewTek also. We have a lube kit as a package that we sell that we'll, we'll introduce to um, new users and it'll come along with the machine, especially for the notchers. We're gonna demonstrate how to lubricate the shear while during the uh, operation with the covers in place. And then we'll, save, we'll remove the safety covers, make sure that the machine is disabled or disconnected. We'll use our lockout tag out so it can be cut on. And then we'll go through and uh, use the product. All right, guys. During normal operation, and like I said earlier, this Super Lube is gonna be the product you're gonna use most. And most importantly is to keep uh, the shear lubricated as you're running product. So with the panel in pause mode, or with the controller in pause mode, you just wanna come up, lubricate at each position, the shear blade on this side, and then you can even have a panel there and also come through and lubricate across the top every 30 cuts. So as you can see that before we move the covers, we safely locked out the machine. So any machine that you have, we wanna make sure that you disable it from unsafe operation. All right, so first of all, we're gonna lubricate the Acme shafts. So what I normally do is we'll go just a little bit on the top of the shaft and then on the inside, and then we'll go down. Two more. Then we'll rotate about a half a turn. And then go back down through the other side. Continuing our Superlu product, we're gonna go ahead and do the rib roller set. And what we wanna do is we wanna put a light coating over the bar and let it drip down. That way we get we don't accumulate any rust on it and then this thing moves freely throughout the duration of the ownership of the machine. Um, so that's what we want to do. Uh, and then periodically when you move it, just hit it again. Now we're gonna move on over to the entry guide. Uh, this one we have here is without notching. Um, so what we want to do is we want to spray this Spray the side over there, over here to keep it from rusting. And then as you move it back and forth, it's gonna stay lubricated and last a, a good while. Okay, now with the super lube, we're gonna go on over to the entry guide uh, on a notching SSQ. And we're gonna head and lube that up. And what we wanna do is lube where the bearings roll at so we don't get any rust and rough spots in it to where we're gonna have issues in the future and we want to make sure we hit both guides. So after we've lubed the uh, entry guide for the notching machine, we're going to go ahead and check our cutting fluid in our reservoirs for the notching uh, portion of it. And this is the fluid we want to be using, which is a punch and die, uh, easy punch fluid. Just go ahead and open these up and get you a funnel or you can use a squirt can or whatever method you'd like to use to go ahead and fill this one up, the right side and also the left side. And you can use that as your weekly maintenance. Okay, now guys, we have the, the EP grease that we use on the uh, entry or the expandable arbor. And we do this as needed. Snap the uh, clip on. Give it a little squeeze. You'll see it start to come through. And then we'll just loosen that up a little bit. Give it another one. And 
now. So you got one on either side here. Same thing on the other side. All right, and we got one more here, or well, actually two more, one on either on each flange bearing at the end of the drive shaft. And turn the cap. And for those that have notchers, you've got a Zerk. for each of the notching cartridges. There's four of them. There you go. Now we're gonna show you where we use the Super Lube gel. Put a little bit of that on the miter gears for each of the Acme shafts at the end of the Acme shaft, and there's five of them on every machine. And we also put a little bit inside the nest so that you're not running your arbor in that slot without lubrication. It'll prolong the life of the shaft on the arbor. Now we're gonna go ahead and lube the gear, the main drive gear. Uh, with the gear lube and all she want to do is spray all of these here And after you spray them go ahead and rotate stop rotate the machine over a little bit uh, so the gear so you can get to the uh, Dry side of the gears and then go ahead and just lube it again Now we're going to go ahead and switch over to the chain uh, we're going to use the molly chain lube and what you want to do is spray the chains. Again, you want to do a nice light spray on them, get them all sprayed, and then any dripping residue you want to wipe off because you don't want it to drip off, get onto the rollers and cause a slippage when you're running the material through. And the next adjustments, uh, you have a, nine, a two 9 16 wrenches. You want to loosen this one and hold it with the nylon, uh, the nylon nut on the back side. Your adjustments right here, so you loosen the lock nut with a 7 16 wrench and you tighten this and push this adjuster sprocket toward the drive and get the chain nice and tight. And once you do that, then you can move over to these. These are a little bit different. Same 9 16 wrench, you loosen it. There's no pusher. You go ahead and push it forward, tighten the chain up, and go ahead and tighten this one. And I always like to do this one and this one on the same chain and try to keep them even. And then we want to do the rest of the chains consecutively all the way down. And as we move through there, we want to go ahead and loop the chains. Uh, one other one I want to talk about is this chain right here. It has a nylon, uh, like an angle, but it has a nylon block underneath of it. You loosen these two uh, half inch bolts. You want to lift this real hard, keep the chain tight, and then go ahead and tighten those up. And that should complete, after you go all the way down through, complete the chain adjustment and chain loop. Okay guys, one of the products that we use uh, to clean the drive rollers is called Simple Green. But you can use any mild cleanser, general purpose cleaner, 409, Fantastic, oh, yeah. Fabuloso, what have you, to clean the rollers. And we demonstrate just by spraying a little bit of that lube on there. And then just give it a good wipe. And if they're really dirty, you can use a scotch Brite pad, but it looks like this is working really good. And then you just rotate that around, do that top and bottom, all the way down till you're done. All right, so another product we use is the acetone, and we'll use that to clean the stainless steel forming rollers. So just a little bit on there, and it helps to have a rag or something behind you to catch the over and... I'm just gonna take that and then just spin that. 
And if you do that enough, you'll prevent any buildup on your rollers, especially if you run products that leave residue on the roller. So we're gonna clean these off using uh, acetone on a scratch bright pad. And one very important reason why we do that is because the bearings have a rubber seal and we don't wanna get acetone on the rubber seal, it'll eat that up. And also notice that all of these that have bearings, the rubber seal means that it's maintenance free. Okay, next we're gonna talk about the hydraulic fluid condition and the fluid level. So we pop the cap off, okay, and then I'll take a, a steel ruler, make sure it's clean, stick it down all the way to the bottom of the screen and put your finger where the top of the neck is. So what I'm looking for is about an inch and a half from the bottom of the screen. We still have enough fluid to operate, but I would probably add just a little bit more. So you wanna make sure that the fluid is clear and just lightly yellow in color. And you wanna make sure that you don't have any foam or frothiness or milkiness. Like uh, if you had coffee with cream, that would mean you had water in it. The frothiness would mean that there was air bubbles somewhere. And then you wanna make sure that it doesn't smell burned or look dark, you know, like an amber color. Now that we've gone through and finished the maintenance process, we want to go ahead and check everything over before we start putting the covers on for your lube, any rags that you may have left in the machine, nuts and bolts that you may have tightened, removed, or put back on. Go through it and make sure you've gotten all that uh, removed from the machine before you put your covers back on. And your tools. And just remember, any parts and pieces that are uh, parts of, from other manufacturers, like your gas motor, your trailer and whatnot, make sure you follow those manufacturer recommended maintenance schedules. Hey, we wanna thank you guys for watching the video. Hope it was helpful. Um, many of those products that we have, we have available at, at New Tech here and we can get it together for you in a kit. If you have any questions, please refer to your manual or reach us at newtechmachinery.com. Thank you.